A very core aspect of self-actualized people is to not rigidly attach to the outcomes that our mind constructs, not rigidly attached to the goals that our mind constructs. Instead, a self-actualized person knows how to move and flow with life in a more Taoist, Buddhist style fashion. You see, a lot of our psychology is designed to just get what we need in order to survive. It treats life as a means to an end, whereas the self-actualized and self-transcended person treats life as an end unto itself. So in this video, I want to talk about this idea of detaching from outcome in order to make your life fun again. You see, the, the self-actualized psyche doesn't disconnect from the emotional and felt experience in order to attain a goal. The self-actualized psyche is able to disconnect, not so much disconnect, but detach, I mean, from the illusion of if I get this goal, then my life will be good. If I get that sex, if I work out, if I get any kind of goal, then I'll be good. Our mind continuously constructs this illusion that we have to chase after a thing, then we'll be good forever, basically, we'll be happy. But the self-actualized, self-transcended person sees this. They recognize that my happiness isn't determined by getting the goal. It's not determined by getting any kind of thing and acquiring it. It's more so determined by my relationship to life. A lot of the suffering I experience is my own construction. It's something that I'm actually doing. Right? In the case of unnecessary suffering, which is the overwhelming majority of suffering that your average human experiences. I'm not talking about like chronic pain or like extremely severe mental health problems. So this is like resisting reality, fighting against it, attaching to outcomes, attaching to goals, attaching to how it should be. Always thinking I should be doing something else. It's like we relate to life in a neurotic kind of way, a manipulative way, a way that's so extractive so we can get what we want and then we'll be good forever. The self-actualized and self-transcendent individual has a little bit more detachment from their needs, typically because they've gotten a good amount of it met, and they're seeing through the illusions of if I get into this relationship or if I have this person in my life, then I'll be happy. If I have this job, then I'll be happy. They're, they're seeing reality more clearly. They're seeing that their state of being attracts things into their life. Their ability to relate to life, this, this is what really matters. Not just getting what I want as like, you know, like a 10 year old on Christmas. If I don't get what I want, then it's all a disaster. The self-actualized, self-transcended person recognizes that whether or not I get this thing that I want, I'm actually safe. I'm okay. My life does not depend on me getting this thing that I want. There's this regulation that happens within them. Their nervous system isn't in fight, flight, freeze. They've typically done a lot of inner work, inner psychological work. So they've cleaned up a lot of these unconscious patterns that just repeat themselves over and over and over again. So the self-actualized and self-transcended person recognizes that it's not really about the goal, but it's about continuously remaining attuned to life. It's about continuously remaining present through life, through the arising and passing phenomena that we call life, through the flow of life. It's about remaining, remaining grounded within oneself as life goes on. And this notion of remaining grounded isn't like a firm, rigid thing. It's allowing the energy and the feelings and sensations and thoughts inside of you to arise and pass without manipulating and always struggling and resisting against them. It's like this non-interference with life. So I want to give you some examples of people who are very good at this. People who are at the self-actualization and self-transcendence level of 
development. So some very good people <laughs> are Ken Wilber, Eckhart Tolle, Abraham Maslow, Adyashanti, David Data, Albert Einstein, Erwin Schrodinger, Ramana Maharshi, Thich Nhat Hanh, Carl Jung, Viktor Frankl, Krishnamurti, Paramahansa Yogananda, Eric Fromm, Carl, Carl Rogers, and Rallo May. And there's a lot more. But by learning to detach from an outcome, life loosens up a little bit. There's, this, there's energy that, that's being freed up. Because when you're attached to the outcome, you're desperate for it. You're needy for it. It's like a repulsive way of relating to the outcome. Whether it's a person or trying to get a job or trying to do anything. The second there's this like clinging and grasping for it, this sense of neediness is going to push it away. And it's just this unnecessary state of suffering. It's very tense. It's stuck in survival, essentially. So we can make this distinction between grasping and clinging and letting go and surrendering. The self-actualized and self-transcendent person, their psyche, especially the self-transcendent person, doesn't resist life. Not nearly as much as someone who's more stuck in egoic levels of consciousness. Instead, they're more so about letting go and surrendering. And this doesn't mean being passive. They can still take effective action. In fact, a lot of people who are um, <laughs> at these levels of development take far more effective action than people who are stuck more so in purely egoic consciousness. Right? People who've been able to move past the ego, these are some of the most influential people of all time. Jesus, Buddha, Gandhi. I'm not saying that these people are perfect. <laughs> I'm not saying that anyone's perfect, actually. Jesus got mad and flipped a table. <laughs> right? An enlightened being can still have shadow, can still have psychological, emotional issues. In fact, that's the case with every single enlightened being. It's, it's a lot easier to work with that stuff when your consciousness is higher. But being a human is hard. So another core distinction here is forced action, action versus aligned action. Forced action is when you attach to outcome and you're just forcing it to get what you want. And of course, this doesn't really work in all context of life. In fact, when it comes to a relationship, for example, it's a horrible approach. When it comes to a lot of things, it's a terrible approach, just forcing it through life. Force involves disconnecting from the emotional and felt experience. Whereas aligned action is about self-connection. It's this sense of being present and grounded within the feeling of experience and not disconnecting from it and being able to listen to it and attune to it and allow that to guide you. It sounds very mystical and poetic, but this is the actual experience of it. This is how it unfolds. Most of us don't know that. All we know is force. We just know I have a goal and I must hustle and grind in this painful like fashion to get what I want. I mean, yeah, this is human psychology. This is just like the ego, ego 101, <laughs> using everything as a means to an end rather than treating life as an end unto itself. It's a totally different way of relating to life. Yet you get that point? <laughs> the point here is that we're looking into our relationship to everything, to money, to food, to sex, to this person, to work, to YouTube videos. We're looking into how we relate to them. And we're making these relationships more fluid and open so that the energy can move in free ways rather than it always being this repressed, constrictive thing that always just leads to suffering. So that's it for this video. If you're interested in working with me, you can apply to do that. The link is somewhere. It's very mysterious. <laughs> if, uh, if you're sincere, I trust that you'll find it. It's not actually very hard to find. Take it easy.